Hello, it's Chris Bottrell here from Chris Bottrell Photography, and uh, this is the third part of the uh, Drone Photography Masterclass, and we are looking today at uh, DaVinci Resolve 12. Now, um, DaVinci Resolve uh, is, a, is an absolutely brilliant program. Um, you can do a hell of a lot more with it than you can with a program like Premiere Pro, but they're, um, they're different in a, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. Um, now, uh, a new version of Premiere Pro has uh, just uh, been announced at NAB recently, and it looks like it is going the same way as DaVinci Resolve, so uh, exciting things to come. Right, so when you open DaVinci Resolve, uh, you uh, have your project manager window. Now, with your project manager window, you, you know, you've got your name, um, and basically all, all the details that um, that you need for each project. I've got my Inspire test, um, two of them actually, uh, one HD, one 4K, um, my Seychelles, my Thailand, my dog, um, loads of other little bits and pieces, but this is what you're presented with. So if you just click on new project, I'm gonna call this Tut, short for tutorials. And you can see the format, um, it's 1080, uh, by 1920, 25 frames a second. Um, if you want to change that, you can just right click and go to config. And in config, you can change your timeline resolution. Uh, so uh, I shot my, do you know what? I can't actually remember what I shot my stuff in. I think it was Ultra HD. Um, and you can change your timeline frame rate. Uh, <clears throat> and all the rest of the, gubbins that goes on with it so if I save that you can see it reflects on there so double click on there and you are presented with this window um, as you can see you've got media edit color deliver so that's the order that you usually go in uh, on the left here I've got all of my hard drives there's quite a few of them so let's go on to inspire yeah, this was a folder that I was doing um, log versus Rec 709 and where I have discovered, if I get time I'll show you later on, that um, log is totally broken. Um, I don't think DJI has any idea um, what colour profiles are, but they have totally tit up. Anyway, so let's go on to this folder and in this one I was using the Inspire on uh, standard and then minus two, minus two, minus two, hence the name of the folder, minus two, minus two, minus two. Um, so you can simply uh, click on your uh, your clip and it'll give you all the information up here. You need to know uh, what codec, how long it is, the frame rate, uh, even the date, bit depth, bit pathetic eight, but that's what we gotta live with. So if you get your, your clip, drag it into your media pool, and there it is. That's the clip we want to work with. Click next onto edit, which is down the bottom here. And uh, this is your timeline. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing in it at the moment. And if we go and drag that in, there we go. It creates a timeline for us. Now, if you drag a clip into the timeline that isn't, um, doesn't conform to the same, um, it will ask you, just like in Premiere Pro, do you want to change it? And you just say, yeah, I'll change it, whatever. So let me just make this timeline a bit squeezy smaller. Now I am using native H.264 files here, which uh, most non-linear editing systems really don't like them because um, they're so highly compressed and there's massive lag. Um, if I was doing this with a raw file, it would actually render real time. Um, people think just because raw files are so big and large that it's going to slow everything down like a bitch, but it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. So we've got this nice little, nice little clip here. Let me just edit that down. Um, you can, you know, you've got your razor tool there if you want. If you want to cut, um, you can basically do most of the stuff that Premiere, um, Adobe Premiere does. But uh, you know, the, it's. DaVinci Resolve is getting better as an editor. It's probably not quite as good as Premiere, but um, the next window, this is where it really shines. So you've got your color. And this is where things get really exciting. Now, 
Uh, when you're doing um, uh, your uh, first corrections, you always want to make sure that you use um, your scopes. So I've got down here on my bottom right my scopes. And as you can see, my red, my green, and my blue channel are all fairly uniform. So that tells me that my, um, my shot, my scene, is at the correct color temperature. Um, you can see the darks down here is not quite dark enough there. Um, so you know we could go into our uh, into our curves, and we could bring the darks down a little bit. You don't want them to clip, so you've got your zero there, which they'll clip black, and you've got your one o two three there, where they'll clip white. So bring them down a smidge. And look at that nice straight horizon there. Um, when I shot this, I accidentally. Um, put the gimbal into FPV mode so it, uh, I do apologize about that disgusting angle there. So uh, right back to Resolve. So Resolve is it's a nodal based um, system and basically a node is this thing here. So rather than uh, editing uh, stuff in layers like you do um, in Adobe products, this one is a nodal system. Um, and Nuke also uses uh, nodes as well. So I've done uh, uh, some corrections in, uh, in this first node. So if you go up to nodes and go add serial node, there are many, many different types of nodes you can see here. Um, if I was to do a correction in this node, let me just do something a little bit outrageous. So let's turn my shadows really blue. Okay. That is, you could you, you could call it uh, you could call it a layer, even though it is a node. Um, so it has just done it in that one. So it hasn't affected the whole thing. So if you want, you could basically just go and uh, uh, reset that node, or delete whatever you've done to it, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So if you're feeling lazy like I am sometimes, if you go to your primary wheels and you've got one and two down there, uh, you can see that does your contrast, pivot, saturation, hue, and luminux mix. And then on number two, your highlights, color boost, shadows, and midtone detail. If you go onto one and just quickly press auto, aha, it does it for you. Um, so you can see it is balanced everything very nicely. Um, you can see the blues there, the mid-tones are a little bit lower, it's because of the sky, basically. Um, so once you have, you, you know, you've conformed your video to uh, correct lights, correct darks, and near enough correct uh, mid-tones, you can then get on to um, doing your colour correction, that's if you want to go any further. Now, over here on our primary wheels, we have got We've got these four. We've got lift, gamma, gain, offset. Basically, it's colorist terms for darks, midtones, highlights, and offset is basically if I go up and down, you can see it offsets the the image. Um, they're good if you want to say, for instance, you know, you want to warm up or make something a bit colder. So on the gain, you can you can cold, uh, make the um, make the highlights a little bit bluer or the darks, if you want to sort of like warm them up a little bit, you can do that. Um, if you ever want to reset these, click the reset button, reset button, and it go, goes totally back to normal again. So, um, and the next thing we're going to look at is LUTs or lookup tables. Um, they can be in a LUT format or they can be in a cube format. I never add a LUT to my first, um, my first node. I always, always add a serial node. And on that node, right click, and you can choose 1D input look, out look, output LUTs, or a 3D LUT. Um, I've got a massive library of loads and loads and loads of different looks. I'll give you an example. Um, if you're using a LUT, make sure it will say at the end of the LUT, it will say whether it's for log or whether it's for rec 709. Now, the DJI Inspire shot in standard is Rec 709, so we want to choose that. And the moment you click on that, oh, it gives you a classic. I think that was Fuji. Let me have a look. Yes, that was a Fuji film stock. 
Now, the same film stock, if you click on log, it looks a bit weird. It's not, uh, not good. So yeah, you've got to just make sure that you, you pick the correct one. One of my favorites is Vision X Rex 709. I quite like that. It's quite a Instagram-y sort of look. Um, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me just delete that node a minute and we'll carry on. Um, so yeah, you've got your uh, your primary color wheels and then you've got your primary bars. So you can do it in bar form if you want. And then you've got log. Uh, which, uh, if people know the difference between log and rec 709, it's, it's, it's a slightly different way of doing it. But on your primaries, um, obviously you can change um, the hue uh, tint colours there, and you can also use these wheels here. So, as I'm demonstrating, that is your darks. So if you want, you know, you can really dark dark something up if you want. Uh, and then you've got your mid-tones. I'll probably bring them down a little bit, actually give it a bit more of a punch. Highlights, you can see this is where the, the little 8-bit video doesn't do too well. It's in the highlights, but it's not bad. And then offset if you just wanna, if you wanna push them up and down again. Um, and then curves, I think most people are familiar with curves, how to use them. Uh, with DaVinci Resolve, you can choose um, your Luminous, your RG, and your B, and you can gang them all together, or you can split them up. So I can just do my reds, Whoa, make that look a bit trippy. Do loads of loads of really cool little stuff with them. Um, and then you've got your qualifiers. Now qualifiers I'll come back to in a minute. Uh, and then you've got your power windows, your tracker, your blur, which is not just blur, it's actually sharpen as well. Um, I discovered zoom all the way in that this is plenty sharp enough it is, as it is even on minus two minus two minus two it may be a tad bit over sharp but this is a very very sensitive sharpening system so you just want to make sure that you're you're sort of like not too aggressive with it so i'll just put a tad bit of sharpening on there just there we go just so you can see so um Let's change this grass slightly. Uh, this is this is going to be the, the the demonstration part. So we'll add a serial node, and we basically just want to select that grass. Now there's quite a few different ways we can do it. The first way is we can use a power window. Now you can either have a square, a circle, a line, or an arc. So you know you can, you can draw it yourself. Um, this one here, a box. So you can stick your box down, and you can you know change all your your angles of the box. Um, let's get rid of that one. The next one is line. No, that's the one I've just done. Silly me. It's this one, that's the one that I want. So this is like a, um, like a pen tool um, that, you, uh, that you would use in an Adobe uh, pro um, product. So let me just have my serial node again. Right, so if I start, oops, bloody wrong one again. Power window, that's what I wanted, not a qualifier. Let's reset that qualifier. Power window, curvy curve, right, here we go. So if I, bearing in mind I'm doing this quite um, quickly for a tutorial. As you can see in this window here, you can see that it's selected just what's in your power window. Um, you can soften it up a bit using the softness here because uh, you know no one likes a, um, a really really sharp line um, now so at the moment we've just got the, the grass um, uh, selected so if you want you can go in and do additional things like you can sharpen the grass soften the grass or one of those really stupid um, tilt shift styles that a lot of people doing personally I don't like them but each to their own so yeah so it's basically you know what what I'm saying is you you can select um, different areas and do what you want with it so let's do uh, let's go into the midtones and change our grass to yeah let's warm it up a bit um, and then you're probably thinking well 
what's going to happen when you move, you know, when you move the camera and you play? Well, that's where this little tracker comes in. Um, DaVinci Resolve's tracker is absolutely amazing. So let me, oh, trippy. Right, as you can see, um, our mask did actually come out a little bit there. But what you can do is you can just drag it back over like that and it's good to go. So let's reset that power window. Let's just reset that node. I've done it again. Do you know what? I've reset all of the nodes instead of just the one that I wanted. It's a little bit... It's very annoying. There we go. Back to, back to normal again. So let's go and add... Um, add another serial node and in this time we're going to use uh, a qualifier now a qualifier is a way of selecting just the color rather than an area so with the qualifier let's go for let's stick with the grass so if I get my my little eyedropper -y tool here select on the grass and as you can see in my qualifier window you can see just the grass is being selected but um, not there's bits of the grass that aren't selected, so we need to widen our range slightly. So you can you can widen your range here, and as you can see, as I'm wind, uh, widening the range, it's adding more more bits. So it's adding some of the trees in the background, in which I really don't want. So let's stop about there, um, and also you can fine tune it more using your using your saturation as well. So there we go. That's that's not a bad little little key there um, so again the same if you want to change anything if you want to make it different color you can do it um, but obviously wow now that is green now um, this you don't have to track because when you play you know it affects all the green but the problem with it is it won't just affect that green it'll affect that green up there and that green there and that green there so sometimes you can use power windows and qualifiers, um, you know, just to get whatever sort of area um, you want. Um, so th this, you can you can see how you know how you can do the um, uh, you know just get the tiniest little bits of uh, little bits of detail in this. Let me just reset that one again. So, um, to finish this off, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little a little film grade on here. Um, so, oh yeah, I've been lazy and I've used the auto. I'm gonna go and plug in. What shall I use? Um, oh, let's go for Vision X Rec 709. There we go. So with LUTs, look up tables. Um, there, some people think that they are presets. They're not a preset. They're basically they're an uh, they're a stock emulation of. Uh, well, originally they were for um, stock emulations of different film stocks when we moved over from film to digital. Um, theoretically, if you have got um, a Rec 709 um, conformed file, a video file. If you were to put that same LUT onto all the different ones, it should come out the same. Should, I say. You can see, yeah, the detail in that is that's pretty cool. Um, maybe, a, maybe a little bit sharp. Um, LUTs don't, um, don't actually, uh, or shouldn't, come with any sharpening on them. I mean, if you make your own, you, you possibly could. But, um, well, I don't know, actually. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Who knows? So now I'm getting, I'm getting what, yeah, 24 frames a second. So near enough real time play um, with 4K video. Um, ignore all of the horribleness around there. It's, uh, it's just because it's such a small window. Now, once you've, um, you know, done everything you need to do, we'll go into more detail um, in, a, in, a, in another tutorial. You go to your last pane, which is deliver. And in Deliver, you can choose whether you want individual source clips or you want everything as a single clip. You can choose all your different codecs that you want to use. I always use QuickTime, and I usually go for something like uncompressed 10-bit 
um, RGB. Um, you can choose your resolution, so you can downscale if you wish. Uh, you can change your frame rate if you like. And you can add it to queue. Uh, I'll ask you whereabouts you want to save it. So, uh, where's my Inspire? There it is. So, press OK. And then you have it on the side, press start render. I'm not going to press start render because it will slow my computer down and you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and that is it. Um, that is a very, 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 very basic um, look through for uh, DaVinci Resolve um, for drone um, videography. Now, I think probably the biggest reason why I use DaVinci more than I use Premiere Pro is because um, Premiere Pro going back you know two years ago literally it didn't have luminetry uh, with it you you had very very little color correcting um tools there obviously you know you've got you, you still had your uh, your scopes and your curves and everything but it's come a long way since then and and i honestly think that i may actually start using premiere pro a little bit more um but yeah the reason i like davinci so much is simply for for drone pilots especially when you're having to you know do selective areas like in um in premiere pro you'd have to draw a power mask and you know sort of like and then animate it and then keyframe it and stuff well whereas in here you know you can you can just get you your qualifier and you know click on your blue sky and you know do what the hell you want with it um so yeah i, I just personally i think it's uh it's it's a lot better and also this whole color environment is 32-bit float um where is premiere pro isn't um i think premiere pro is either 8 or 16 no it'll be 16 actually it won't be 8 because 8's a little bit poor um yeah so that's why i like it um and you you uh, you can get some plugins as well for davinci resolve um like film convert pro um let me just reset this node a minute and then just do a an automatic on it again so uh, film convert pro is basically drag it over uh, so you can choose your source camera um, there's all these different cameras there the uh, in the DJI platforms are um, on there but I haven't got the latest version and then you've got this very small amount of film stocks to choose from um, and personally I really don't like it because when you press play look I'm getting one frame a second playback um, I've got the, one of the latest GPUs in here and for some reason it still doesn't like it oh I get two frames a second wow so yeah, um, I don't like. I mean, film con film convert is is you know it's good, but it's a bit gimmicky. You know, if you want, um, you know, you've got this tiny little list of uh, list of film stock here. Whereas you know, with DaVinci Resolve, you you get quite a few, and you know, and you can collect loads and loads of loads and loads of other ones. Um, if you want any for uh, any lots, um, send us a message, and I don't mind sending a few out to some people. Uh, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, I think in the next tutorial um, we're going to be looking at Premiere Pro and we'll go slightly more into depth um, with DaVinci Resolve at another time. So thank you for watching. Uh, again, if you like this video, um, please like, share and subscribe. Keep safe, happy flying and see you soon.